sent to Amphibia today, and you could only use what you had in your backpack to survive until you found your frog foster home. What would you have in your backpack? Oh no, that's really incriminating. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I... <laughs> You're not gonna fucking believe this. All I have in my like red backpack that I have in my freaking closet right now is a Chinese like uh one of those Chinese like decorations you hang on a wall that has like jade color and condoms. <laughs> You hunch under a rock <laughs> to get away from the rain. Oh, you hang wrong. up your Chinese decoration <laughs> and you pull out your trusty sack of condoms. You blow one up and use it as a pillow. <laughs> use another one as a drinking cup to catch the rain. <laughs> you use your Chinese decorative wall art as shelter. I was more trying to refer to the yeah. Lemon. I was referring to the food you bought today, like... Oh, I, my you, back! I, I just, thought you meant just what would you want to have. <laughs> no, I thought I was trying to incriminate his sack of treats he bought at 7-Eleven, not his home backpack. What yeah, his quote-unquote trail mix, he calls it. <laughs> Which is what? Chex Mix and Lucky Charms Marshmallows. Hey, Holy shit. It is a... Hey, it is a mix, okay? You got horseshoes, hearts, red balloons. They're all marshmallows. <laughs> it's a mix. And then Hot Pop shows up. <laughs> he says, oh, what's this? And he takes a big mouthful of marshmallows and he can never open his mouth again. <laughs> he gives him fucking blood poison. <laughs> Pure sugar. <laughs> His teeth fall out in an instant. <laughs> he's like a mill. He's like knee eye to a grasshopper. He'd die instantly. His people have never known sugar, and now he's getting the most condensed sugary substance <laughs> known to man. Is this poison? <laughs> His tongue sizzles. <laughs> oh god! His tongue is permanently glued to the bottom of his mouth. Could have been the top. Well, you never know. Anybody could end up an amphibia at any time. It's true. Today we're talking about amphibia and doing our second ever fan fiction jam where the community, you, I'm pointing my finger at the microphone, writes the stories for us. I'm, you do the work. Yes. Uh, we should also say, normally you we have like a pre-done this. disclaimer where we say, um, this we're not trying to make fun of anyone we're just reading the stories as we find them don't go hunting people out to bully them it's just for fun to read stories um this time we are going to say people's names we don't normally say names because you guys in some cases worked real hard to write these stories for us and who so, didn't <laughs> <laughs> uh, the people that said oh i wrote this story last year here you go read this <laughs> that's who um but Did yeah that happen it was more like, I wrote this recently, you're hosting in a jam, you should check this out. It's not, I'm not That's trying to be fair. Cool. Again, we're not trying to bully anyone, really. It's really appreciate you writing stories or sending your stories in. Unless and, you just wrote the damn first episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one of the no, very that's common proper tropes. fan fiction editing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, one of the very common the first tropes. episode, except your favorite character or OC is along for the ride. That's fair. That's to fair. interject with a witty quips <laughs> <laughs> to explain their backstory to everyone they come across. This is a comedy cool. podcast. If you're not familiar with it, so we're going to be making light of these. But again, we're not trying to be mean or anything. We just like to have fun. Mm. Um, and we made the people that were submitting these aware that this is a comedy thing also. So if, they're, if their stories get serious and we laugh at them, it's not because we're making fun of them. They know that we're joking. Now that you're done covering your ass, welcome to Crossing <laughs> the Line, a fan fiction podcast where we read, review, and critique fan fiction for your listening pleasure. I'm George G. Poole. As always, I've got my two co-hosts, Elias Viva Vlogs. Hello. And Stephen Blue Breed. Hello. But I, I lost my steam real fast when you did that. <laughs> I didn't know how to respond. I'm sorry, George. I just watched the season finale of season two. I've been working my way through it very slowly for the past couple of months. Uh, uh, Blue Breed and G Pool here have been caught up for a little while. Mm -hmm. That's our experience with the show, basically. Tune in to the season three premiere Saturday, October second at nine thirty a.m. Yeah. On Disney Channel. <laughs> we gotta get a green screen so we can all do the Disney Channel thing. 
Oh yeah. And make an entire decom. <laughs> just make just our so logo. we can put those interjections in. I could not believe they had like a musical band episode, the second to last episode, but it's very <laughs> Disney Channel of them to do that. <laughs> we just watched I, that one also. I love the song in that episode, but it's also incredibly Disney core and I think that's hilarious. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> If you're listening to this episode, you are also probably very familiar with Amphibia, so I guess watch out for spoilers if you're not, but I'm assuming you all are, so deal with it. If you haven't watched it, the first season's a little bit like like Slice of Life story Yeah, you of the said week. you wanted to tear this show apart, and I want to hear why. Oh, well, I'll get to that. But like, <laughs> the first season was pretty like, oh yeah, it actually is related to that. It's like, they introduce a problem in the beginning, and then like immediately it shows up, so much so that, like, you know what the plot of the episode is going to be because they, like, basically spoil it for you. Like, they're having trouble with this thing. And then, I don't know, I should probably find a better example of just making that <laughs> up. Um, you scoured my mind. Uh, like, in one episode, like, Anne and Sprig are like, we're mature now, Polly. You need to learn to take responsibility for yourself. And then she's like, whatever. And then she goes and causes a lot of trouble. And then she's like, I have to learn to take responsibility for myself. And it's like, they just, in the first, like, minute of the episode, they pretty much lay out what the plot is going to be. And I kind of like it better when shows are, like, more mysterious about it, or, like, it just kind of naturally progresses. I will say that episode, though, is a good one, because uh, it actually, like, has to do with a new character, like, that becomes a main part of the show, the robot frog. So, like, I don't know, I think that's a fine example. Like, that's not a bad example, but... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just, I thought that was a little bit annoying, because it was, like, the first season was, like, First minute of the episode, they introduce the problem, and that's the whole episode every single time. Mm -hmm. But then, like, by the second season, they go, like, out of the valley and go to new places, and, like, at least the problems that are presented are, like, in new environments and in new stuff. Like, the budget must have been a lot higher, because they go a lot more places, mm -hmm. they do a lot more things. Oh, absolutely. And I'll pretty much always give, like, season ones of a cartoon uh, a, a bit of slack, just because more often than not, they really kind of just have to set themselves up in a way for producers and stuff to want to pick them up and keep going mm -hmm. so i def i generally give shows more of a slack in the beginning as they kind of find their footing and once they're like greenlit to go on then a lot of times the shows will do what they actually want to do which is cool i'll also say not to just like be super gushy about the show it's hard to have a whole narrative in 11 minutes so i can i get why they have that set up and everything but yeah i get what you're saying yeah. I think it makes sense. Like, they have to establish the main world for a little while before they start doing other stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I like how the pacing's broken up. I like the first season. There's legitimate reason for them to just be having silly frog adventures because they're waiting for the roads to no longer be iced over. Oh, it's like an RPG thing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You have to do X amount of side quests until Sasha comes to town. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a little bit mundane in the beginning, but I learned to appreciate it because second season was like, a lot more craziness. I don't think I would have liked it as much if I hadn't spent more time in the valley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's good. It all worked out. I'm saying this because if you've never watched the show and you're just tuning in, uh, you should give it a try and, like, deal with it because it's worth it to have watched season one for season two. Yeah, and it's like, like, you, with any series, you can't really have a developed character without giving time to develop the character. So having right. a lot of those fluff episodes, I think, really helps, <laughs> at least in my opinion. Now, Steven, you say something. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I, I definitely see where you're coming from. That's an issue I get with, like, specifically Disney shows nowadays, is that they have a bad habit of spelling. Steven, and... don't rip the Owl House a new one. I know you really want to. I'm not ripping uh, into, like... He's got to blow. I'm, I'm ripping into, like, all the ones, including the ones I like, because a lot of shows that I, like, currently like also do that, just as a happenstance. But, like, a lot of shows, uh, specifically Disney ones, I'm noticing, they have a bad habit of really spelling things out instead of just letting their narrative like tell things through storytelling <laughs> and i consider that personally i consider that lazy but at the same time too like i don't know it's hard it's hard for me to explain i feel like they're giving kids a lot less credit than they really have for how they're able to perceive things that's fair yeah like i think if they didn't have the one minute mm -hmm. to set up before every amphibia episode it would have been fine <laughs> And I've been like, oh, this episode is about this, after you kind of get into it, instead of it being like, this is what the episode's going to be about, okay, let's do it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's fine either way. I get it. 
there are definitely a lot of shows that talk down to kids way, way worse than some of these Disney programs. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's not like fucking Dora the Explorer or anything uh, no. like that. It's just Pretty like... much anything junior entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> or like, um, Teen Titans Go. Mm. They're very much into just a one-note gag for a full 12 minutes. Absolutely. Because the... that's what kids like. The episode where kids they just... Kids are so fucking stupid. They don't deserve cartoons. <laughs> I remember loving Johnny Test when I was like 11 years old. <laughs> what about now? Uh, I I can like remember an exact episode where it was just like one fart joke for the entire episode and how like clearly I was watching with my friend and being like, oh, it's so funny. They didn't do it again. Just like loving it. And then I saw the same episode like a few years ago and I was like, this is garbage TV. This is absolutely nothing. <laughs> what about like a, the at least three Pokemon episodes? Oh they yeah, keep going to the Pokemon world, and I like just... that one. Also, as a kid, I was like, "Oh, cool! This is like a different episode of mm-hmm. Johnny Test. It's not like the same Flash animation." Or the Crash Bandicoot parody, where the joke is Crash Bandicoot's in real life, but it's not. <laughs> no, I thought Johnny Test was like really creative and fun as a kid. Mm-hmm. I remember even as a kid, I didn't like looking at it. I like, thought the art style was very unappealing. The art and animation and like audio and everything was very low quality, but at least it was like creative. At least to me as a kid, I remember feeling creative. And they're ripping from a lot of properties, but I didn't know that because I was a kid, so it didn't matter. I remember there was an episode where the uh, the Secret Service guys come in with a giant mech, and it's just a bunch of different, like, looks to be pre-made assets all stitched together. <laughs> and it just looked really bad, and, and it it's very obviously symbol animated. Yeah. And it just, like, pissed me off. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I'm not watching this anymore. <laughs> You're lucky there's nothing else on Nick. <laughs> Fuck that. You think I'm watching Nicky, Ricky, Dicky, and Don? Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> not, that wasn't even in that time period. No. <laughs> True Jackson VP. I remember, uh, I'm going to on too much of a tangent. We should just get started. We've got a lot to read. That's true. Fair, fair. If you're new to the podcast, this is a regular bit we do where we don't focus on the show, so, uh, Steven? All right, let's see. I'm going to get us started here. Yeah, who's that one by, huh? huh? Let's see. This fan fiction was submitted by our friend Avi. Avi, last name, from uh, the Discord. E. Which you can join, by the way. Crossing the line Discord. Link in the description. Hell yeah. All right, Avi, what you got for us? <clears throat> Chapter one, Frog Story. <laughs> At the town of Wartwood in the Lanos Amphibia, two creatures are preparing some sort of challenge. One of the creatures, a human named Anne Boon Choi, is holding up a phone filming said challenge. <laughs> the other creature, a frog named Sprig Planter, is opening a barrel of what looks to be peppers. I thought I was going to be cinnamon. <laughs> oh no! A barrel of cinnamon. <laughs> Hop Hop's precious cinnamon. <laughs> Hop Hop burns his lungs. Hop Hop's been breathing dragon's breath. <laughs> Sprig took one of the peppers out and looked to the camera. Okay, I'm gonna attempt the hot pepper challenge. Apparently, this is a challenge that's common in Anne's world. So, I'm gonna do it by eating one of Hop Pop's pain peppers. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about the pain peppers. I love that. I can, like, just hear, like, the ambient background music from that show behind the scene. (laughs) Same, same. Feels very on brand. It does. They're so hot that they'll make you wish that you were dead. (laughs) I I already got my swamp slushy at the ready. (laughs) Yuck. (laughs) It's just mud. (laughs) It's, It's bog juice. Frozen bog juice. Hop Hop's Slump Slushy. <laughs> Moonshine. Yum. <laughs> you went Take too far. <laughs> Take a swig, Anne. Uh, please. Uh, here's your Swamp Slushies, kids. And I made yours special. Please. <laughs> Sprig then flicked the pepper like a coin upwards and then down into his mouth. Five seconds hadn't even passed when Sprig started to spit out fire. Ah, this was a mistake! 
Sprig then took a chug of his slump slushy to try and mitigate the pain. It didn't help at all. Why did I do this? Someone kill me! Ah! He did say that would happen. <laughs> Sprig laid down on the ground in the family guy boats. <laughs> <laughs> Sprig, the one frame of animation under the ground. <laughs> With his arm behind his back. Yeah. <laughs> While he excreted smoke from his mouth. <laughs> you okay? And said to the barely conscious Sprig. Still filming. I'll live, Sprig said weakly. And then Hop Hop came out of the house with Polly in hand. Oh no. <laughs> you been eating my pain peppers? <laughs> How much pain you in? Now, kids, we gotta get going to the store if we're gonna have some food for the rest of the week. All we have right now are those pain peppers, and we all know what happens when you eat just one. So come on, you can do your silly challenge another time. He's taking them to the racetrack. (laughs) I hope. Sprig then got up and both Anne and Sprig said... But hop, hop. Then Polly held her hand up in the air, interrupting the both of them. Guys, do you just want to eat pain peppers for the rest of the week? Polly said to the pair. Fine, Sprig and Anne said. <laughs> Sprig's over his moment of distress. <laughs> Sprig's numb to the pain. His horrifying incident of terror. <laughs> then the fa- Then the family... <laughs> I was gonna say the family guy. Stop. <laughs> then the family got on Bessie the snail and headed to town, but not before Sprig pocketed two pain peppers for later. <laughs> <laughs> Once the family got into town, they saw the destruction that laid before them. It looked like something rampaging through the town. As he looked on at the destruction, one-eyed Willie came at the planter, screaming, Ah! Monster! Monster! That's not how one-eyed Willie sounds. <laughs> it's the Australian one. As he runs around Just Look the what pl- you did. There was a bar of, <laughs> of vibration on the audacity. Good. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Wait. Is is Wally one-eyed? Or is Wally different from one-eyed Willy? No, there is no one-eyed Willy. Oh, okay. You're thinking of your wiener. I was thinking of Wally, the Australian frog. <laughs> what? That was some master class gaslighting, holy shit. What are you talking about? One eye, one-eyed Wally exists. No, he said one-eyed Willy. Oh, okay, okay. Which is your wiener. Stop. <laughs> he didn't get it the first time. Who's one-eyed Wally? He's the one that plays the the thingy, and he That's, tells He's the, the Australian one. Yes. Okay, yeah. that's what I said. No, you said one eye. You said you confused him with one-eyed Willie, but that's not a character. Anyway, <laughs> let me try again. Ah, monster, monster! As he runs around the planters in a circle, after a few seconds, <laughs> I just saw the wave. Yeah. After a few seconds, pure spastic panicking, Polly then grabbed him by the scarf and gave him a couple special fives across his face to calm him down. I thought they were giving him money. <laughs> gave him a couple special fives to calm him down. Everyone Wally, slipped him Wally. a fiver. Stop. It's like, leave us be. Take all the money. You damn beggar. Here you go. Like those Japanese people who just lay in the streets until they throw change at them. It's <laughs> real, look it up. Okay, okay. Wally, calm down. What the heck happened here? Polly said to the now calm down Wally. <laughs> A monster came by chasing after us frogs. Almost all of us got away, but the monster went after Toady and chased him into the nearby lake. Not Toady. Oh, no. The planters then looked at each other and Anne said, What did this monster look like? Wally then explained, It was big! It was furry! 
It was purple. It had long ears. <laughs> and it called us froggy. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the planters were at all in shock, except for Anne. <laughs> Did the monster try to eat any of you? Anne said. No, it just chased us, Wally responded. <laughs> Sprig then chimed in. Maybe there's a chance that Toadie is still alive. If so, I'm gonna save him. Oh no, Sprig, Hop Hop said. <laughs> You're not gonna chase down this beast. I won't allow it. Besides, the grub and go is not completely destroyed, <laughs> so we can still get some shopping done. The grub and go. <laughs> Good. Sprig side. But hop up. <laughs> no, and that's final, Sprig. Hop up exclaimed. <laughs> then the, the planters went to the grub and go to get their shopping done. Once the planters went inside the partially destroyed shop, and leaned down to whisper in Sprig's ear, Why do you want to chase this beast anyway? Based on the destruction of the town, I don't think it'll be a friendly one. Sprig whispered back. Well, everyone thought that you were a beast when you first arrived, but it turned out that you were friendly. Maybe this so-called beast is friendly too. And gave it some thought and then whispered. Maybe you're right. Even though it sounds like a bad idea, I'll help you out <laughs> with this beast and also try to save Toady. <laughs> And also try to save Tony. <laughs> but first we gotta slip by Hop Hop if we're gonna do this. Hop Pop sees all. <laughs> I think the store has that covered, Sprig said, as he pointed at Hop Hop, who was being overwhelmed of joy at the variety of new seeds that the Grub and Go had in stock. <laughs> and that both of them knew that he would take a long time to look through all these seeds. To ensure that Hop Pop remains oblivious of their absence, Spriggs paid Polly and Candy to keep Hop Pop in check <laughs> while the pairs slip off to go find Sprig the beast. paid Polly and Candy to keep her out of this episode. This is dangerously <laughs> close to the beginning episode of the series. Oh. <laughs> waiting in the cart. <laughs> you boys, wait in the cart. <laughs> boys. <laughs> <laughs> Sprig and whatever you are. He hasn't gotten Anne checked yet. <laughs> I'll check her later. <laughs> <laughs> Says she's a girl, but I've never seen you before, so. I've never seen a girl before. And... <laughs> <laughs> Who would you be the first? <laughs> <laughs> Once well, outside, the pair got on Bessie, and Anne said, Bessie, things are getting messy. Then Bessie sped up as the pair went to go find the beast. Chapter 2, Big Story. Big the cat was walking through the forest with Froggy on his head. They were, <laughs> they were heading to their usual fishing spot when they spotted a spiraling void. <laughs> <laughs> he just turns his head to the left and the camera pans and it's just right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the it's like the first episode of Sonic X where he turns and he just sees chaos control happening. <laughs> Sonic can do it for no reason just because Shadow could. <laughs> he even used a fake emerald. <laughs> Big, being the simple cat that he is, approached the void of mild curiosity. In an instant, <laughs> both Big and Froggy were sucked into the void. Then black. Big saw, Big saw nothing for a while, but then he opened his eyes. He seemed to be in a swamp. He was trapped in Digimon Limbo. <laughs> <laughs> he was fucking pureed. My digital information was whipped, chopped, and pureed. My information was chopped, whipped, and pureed. Your Big is so dangerously close to your Sanji impression. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> He saw nothing for a while, but then he opened his eyes. He seemed to be in a swamp. After a few seconds of taking in his new in environment, Big noticed that Froggy wasn't on his head. After this realization, Big then 
got up and started to walk around to look for his friend. After a few minutes of walking, Big heard a couple of voices. After a bit of investigating, Big happened upon two creatures, one of them being a toad named Froderick Toadstool, who is the mayor of Wartwood, <laughs> the other creature being the mayor's right-hand man, a frog named Toady. <laughs> the duo were approaching what looked to be an outhouse while the mayor was holding a bag labeled taxes. <laughs> If the frogs are all, like, half ants height, Big's gotta be a fucking beast compared to them. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Let's see here. Once the bag was empty, Toadie closed the door, and Toadstool began to speak. Well, now, Toadie, that was a mighty fine idea of hiding the town's taxes in this abandoned outhouse. It's certainly better than the statue last time. As Big was looking on at the tax evasion crime that was going to happen, <laughs> he looked at Toadie. Since Big wasn't the brightest light bulb in the Sonic universe, he thought that Toadie was froggy. With that thought in mind, Big decided to try to retrieve the mistaken froggy. The big cat on campus then stomped over at the partners in crime with rhythmic stride. And once the duo noticed him, Toadstool then shouted, One frog's name is that! As Big got closer, the duo then ran off, which prompted Big to run as well. He's gonna hook Toadie. He is, he is. Nice catch. While also saying, come here, froggy, <laughs> as Toadstool and Toadie were running, a fishing line that was shaped like a lasso <laughs> that wrapped itself <laughs> around Toadstool. <laughs> it's like the fucking Spongebob scene where Patrick gets caught by the lasso and explodes. <laughs> what? Ah, Toadie! He screamed as he got pulled back towards Big, which resulted in a mushroom cloud leaving Just his like that. leaving his fate <laughs> unknown. He's out of bullets, he's so afraid. Yeah, he fucking exploded the mayor in one frame. That's so fucking funny. Yeah. <laughs> Big would cause that. Me and you, Abby, we're on the same page. Hell yeah. Doty kept running for his life since he could still hear Big coming towards him. He thought to himself, This thing isn't after Toadstool, it's after me! With this realization in place, Toadie shrieked to the heavens as he entered into town screaming, MONSTER! <laughs> and like a runaway train, Big came crashing into town, still trying to catch Tony. <laughs> And during his accidental rampage, Big managed to knock down a couple of buildings and completely demolished others in his wake. Amongst the chaos with frogs running around all over the place, Toadie managed to run out of the destruction, but Big noticed and continued <laughs> to run over the poor old frog as the both of them headed their way to the nearby lake. Once Tony approached the lake, he then proceeded to jump in and swim into its depths. He thought that since this thing was a big beast, he assumed it didn't have the capabilities to swim and that it would be safe at that lake. <laughs> what he didn't account for was the fishing rod the beast had. <laughs> oh no. Oh shit, I can see the fucking meter as we speak. <laughs> Steven, remember that time I caught a, I caught Froggy using the racing wheel? That was awesome. <laughs> that was a that was a time. And once Big got to the lake side, he noticed that the frog was at the lake again, and he'd had to fish him out. So Big sat down and began to fish <laughs> for Tony. Plop his ass down and get to work. Reels <laughs> <laughs> <Freels> back. <laughs> Poor Toadstool, he's fucking gone. He's got mini gamed. All right. Hey, big guy. Hey, little guy. I was thinking of the the beach level music that's really just chaotic and inappropriate. True, true. It's just, just a loud twanging that always sounds so close to being on key, but not quite. <laughs> Chapter 3, Final Story. 
insert Aaron Hansen joke. <laughs> <laughs> when, is, when is he going to come on the podcast? I, I don't know. That's a good question. You want to get back in touch with him? Uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> Say, hey, remember how I did you that solid? <laughs> I'm here to collect. <laughs> I you can call it that. <laughs> Cameo in when the I respond. St- when I stopped e-cucking you. <laughs> E cuck. <laughs> I don't think Susie even exists on the internet anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's fair game. It's true. It's true. <laughs> That's not what I was doing at all. <laughs> <laughs> she always was and always will be. <laughs> and in spring. Did you know Game Grumps opened a Patreon? Really? When? Like now? Pretty recently. I don't know Aren't why. Aren't they still in, like, wild numbers? I he, think so. He owns three businesses. Yeah, but he needs more. That fucking... <sighs> they're what? S- they're still getting, like, hundreds of thousands of views on every daily video, right? Yeah, and, like, their daily uploads are, like, a half hour long. Oh, my God. Never mind. Aaron's doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> the cucking continues. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed with your story. This blue breed lore is getting too deep. <laughs> it's my favorite part of the arc. The blue, the blue breed podcast. You know Samuel needs something to do after he finishes Christian. <laughs> the blue breed comprehensive history. I can see a fucking. I can see a picture of me with the SpongeBob pop at the opening of every episode. Dun, what dun, made him this way? <laughs> In that picture, that picture I took of you drawing Crash Bandicoot smut shooting, <laughs> uh, shooting darts at your monitor. <laughs> I have too much fucking material to work with. Yeah, you're hilarious. <laughs> Read the story. And Sprig made it to the lakeside and discovered Big the Cat trying to fish Tony out of the water. <laughs> Just sitting there. That story there, could start so. right there. That'd be enough. <laughs> <laughs> now that he's doing the thing you said earlier they have to set up the problem so they can have the problem <laughs> however most of these attempts to get him out of the water would have resulted in some grump rage quitting but, <laughs> s- <laughs> but since we're talking about Big the Cat here he remained calm <laughs> Then the pair looked on to analyze the beast that laid before them. After a few good seconds, Anne said, Wait a minute. That's just a cat. A cat? Sprig asked. Yeah, a cat. But it's big, replied Anne. (laughs) It sure is, buddy. (laughs) I don't know if I would look at that and think it's just a cat. (laughs) With a fishing rod. Like, (laughs) sitting on its ass with mitts on. Big fishing rod. <laughs> After a few more seconds of analyzation, Anne said, It also looks like it can be talked to. Just as she said this, Anne went to approach Big. Once she got next to him, she lightly tapped his side to get his attention. Excuse me, Anne said to Big. Why are you fishing for Toadie right now? Big then turned around to Anne and said, I gotta get froggy. <laughs> Froggy? No, that's Toady you're fishing for right now. And based on the look on his face, he seems to be absolutely terrified of you. Anne replied. <laughs> well, he did kill the mayor. Single handedly. <laughs> Supposedly. He got a fucking crit in Sonic Chronicles. <laughs> he double boosted. You know that. <laughs> It actually is kind of like his attack in Chronicles. He fucking hooks you and pulls back. <laughs> I forgot he was even in that game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's not even like a like an off secret character. Yeah, he's required. Hell yeah, that game's cool. It is. It is. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Anne replied. Big didn't seem to get what Anne was saying and continued to fish after Toadie. <laughs> he just turned away from her. Keeps on fishing. He like kind of tilts his head and then just <laughs> continues. <laughs> like an actual cat. Mm-hmm. Let's see. As Anne tried to stop Big from fishing, Sprig was getting his slingshot ready just, <laughs> just in case the beast started to attack. 
As he was stretching its sling to warm up, he noticed a thing hopping towards Anne and Big. From what Sprig could gather, just by analyzing it, it seemed to be amphibian in nature. But it looked different than any other amphibian Sprig saw, as the amphibian landed on Anne's head somehow, without Anne noticing. She then called out to... Your afro's so dense. I know, right? Oh, my lord. She then called out to Big once more. Seriously, can you stop fishing at Tony? Anne said. (laughs) (laughs) Big ignored her. (laughs) Big chose fucking violence today, my god. Popping into a damn portal. Big spun around in circles, making a bunch of tire screech sound effects. (laughs) (laughs) He took off his fucking chocolate and chucked it at her. Mm Mm-hmm. Once Big turned around to face Anne once more, he noticed his polywog pal who was unknowingly on Anne's head. Froggy, Big said. What? Anne replied. Big then stood up and attempted to grab Anne, which resulted in Anne screaming while running away from Big. (laughs) Ah! (laughs) Crawling on the ground like King Andreas. Oh, oh God, you're right. <laughs> Once Sprig saw the whole thing, he attempted to grab some rocks out of his pocket, but he accidentally grabbed the two pain peppers he still had in his pockets <laughs> and, oh, no. and ready to slingshot to fire at the beast that chased him. Like a true episode, it always comes back around. It's true, it's true. Froggy! Frog! No, big! (laughs) Frog said before he got interrupted by the peppers, entering his mouth and plummeting down into his stomach. Big just stood there for a moment. (laughs) Then heat of the peppers caused his stomach to explode. No! 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 Explode? It greatly expanded him for a moment, but surprisingly <laughs> leaving him intact. <laughs> oh no! I've never thought of a gag like that just being worded out. <laughs> yes. Like a fucking Tom and Jerry gag. Yeah, I, love, I love that. <laughs> the smoke comes out of his ears. <laughs> <laughs> In the aftermath, B- Big still stood there, but now smoke excreted from his long ears. Yeah. <laughs> you have been nailing all these plot points. I've Holy been shit. this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> our biggest fan was ourselves. <laughs> Anne approached Big cautiously along with Spray, who told Anne about the thing on her head. She then picked up the frog from her head and held it. The branch. This is what that thing was after, Anne said. Just as she said it, Big began to fall down in front of them. Anne was able to get away in time, but Sprig wasn't so lucky. (laughs) He got squished under Big's big old belly. Big corpse. (laughs) It killed him. (laughs) Just then the frog leapt out of Anne's head and hopped... Next to Big, the frog said. Then Big's head lifted up to see his amphibian friend. There you are, my pollywog pal, Big said to Froggy. He then put Froggy on his head, then got up and walked off. (laughs) Back to the portal, wherever that may be. (laughs) He looks to the right and the camera pans to the right. (laughs) The Calamity boxes uses three Chaos Emeralds. <laughs> <laughs> True. One one is slowly fucking running out of power. And then checked up on the now flattened Sprig, who just went through his second near-death experience today. <laughs> oh god, Sprig, are you okay? A concerned Anne said to Sprig. He then weakly raised his, ar- his arm up to give a thumbs up and said, I live in the same weak tone. <laughs> Just then, an angry mob led by the somehow still alive Mayor Toadstool, <laughs> <laughs> along with Polly and Hop Pop, arrived at the lakeside. 
Toadie, overwhelmed with tears of joy to finally see Toadstool alive and kicking, hopped towards his arms and said, Sir, you're alive! During this joyful reunion, Polly and Hop Hop went back, went to get back on went to get check on Sprig, who looked like he was near death. <laughs> Sprig, what happened to you? Hop Hop said worriedly. Sprig, using whatever willpower he had left to speak, said, "The hot pepper challenge, Hop Pop. <laughs> the hot pepper challenge." <laughs> Epilogue. Big and Froggy exited the outhouse with Big feeling gray and refreshed. <laughs> <laughs> with Froggy. Big uh, shit all the money. He shit all the taxes. Oh, uh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Big feeling gray and refreshed. They continued their walk. Just then, Toad's duo and Toadie approached the outhouse to check on their money. As they got closer and closer to the spot, they began to smell something bad. <laughs> and once Toad's duo... Oh, that was a hot pepper shit, too. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> uh... <laughs> and once Toadstool opened the door to the outhouse, he saw the horrifying pile that laid before him. It seemed that Big the Cat left a Big the Scat on the toilet, which is now on top of his money. No. <laughs> Both confused and disgusted, he ordered Tony to clear out the outhouse so they can retrieve their now dirty money. The end. And there's that one off with a bang. Holy shit. That's disgusting. <laughs> Big the scat. Yuck, that's something you would have written in your own story. <laughs> that is absolutely something I wrote. Big the cat left a big the scat. <laughs> the horrifying pile that went before the <laughs> dirty money. The word pile in reference to shit is so good. I rate that an actual amphibia episode. It had, it had all the dynamics of, of an 11 minute special. I rate that three out of three hot peppers and hot pepper gaming. <laughs> hot pop doing the hot pepper gaming. And then. <laughs> what was that? That was hot pop on hot pepper gaming. I hot. thought this game was pretty good. <laughs> Donkey Kong Country Returns. I don't play many video games. You can play as Cranky Kong. I like Cranky Kong. <laughs> I'm sorry, Hot Pepper Gaming. Hot Pepper Gaming. <laughs> yes, oh my god. <laughs> thank you. Good. That was a good one. Thank you, Albie. Thank that you, Albie. As usual, thank you, Albie. I uh, rate that. I rate that. Please tweet that at Matt Braley and ask him to please, <laughs> <laughs> please have an ending like that. <laughs> an ending like that <laughs> to the whole series. <laughs> please put a big pile in. Yeah. I really <laughs> want have Toadstool and Tony look at it. <laughs> I really want Hop Pop to shit in a human toilet and not flush. <laughs> Why would you say that? Now that you've said that, it's gonna be done. <laughs> I'm so happy <laughs> season three is gonna be powerful now this next fan fiction it's a it's a real hoot or maybe i haven't we haven't read these so yes we're going in blind this one was <laughs> submitted on reddit thank you reddit redditor, redditor user uh i immediately forgot boopy Rupi. <laughs> boopy you, Rupi reddit. or soupy goopy as you like to be known on our archive of our own go check out soupy goopy on archive of our own here we go prune fingers she hated it when her fingers pruned in the shower she was a nail biter and it made her queasy to look at the bits of chipped skin little crumbles of it from where her teeth missed made her want to pick and pick and pick and before she knew it her fingers were red raw and bleeding is that how this happens yeah. like do you ever get that when your fingernails are just like around the edges get like I don't have any right now, I think. But. I don't like that. 
Yes. That. Uh, sometimes. It depends. Sometimes. Not like up here. Sometimes no. they just are just weak around a certain point and they break off really easily. There's nothing weak the about cuticles. me, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, some people, like, when you go get your nails done, they actually push out the cuticles mm-hmm. oh. um, intentionally. But, like, sometimes they'll just fall off by themselves also. No, we're yeah. talking more about, like, when they're uneven like that. I was talking, like, the red bump up there. Oh. Oh, that, that. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's... Okay, I think they, cuticles. I used to bite my nails really bad, and I think they're just referring to, like, you can also bite the skin off. Like, uh, if you bite your nail, then it, like, reveals some of the, like, thin skin, and you can also bite that off, so you'll have, like, a red ring above your fingernail. I hate mm-hmm. that. Yeah, I don't do that so, anymore. Sorry, we immediately derailed your story. Well, it's, <laughs> it's plot critical. The title is Prune Fingers. That's yeah. true, that's true. <laughs> so, yeah, you can bite your fingernails and also the skin underneath until it's, like, raw. Don't do it. PSA, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, do not yeah. get nail trimmers. The first time she woke up, she took a quick look at where she was and didn't take a second to think about how the pads of her fingers were healed. There were more important things to focus on, like the way she thought she was in purgatory, but that weird orangey hue that bit through the blue space around her. There was also the mask secured to her face, the black wetsuit, the tubes connected to said wetsuit, and the tank she was being held in. Oh, this is like post season two. Yeah, so we just said spoilers already, but spoilers already. Yes. <laughs> in the pickle jar, so to speak. <laughs> yes, Marcy's in the pickle jar. <laughs> her fingers were the least of her worries. Fair enough. <laughs> Although she did feel better when she saw they were intact and working. When she eventually fell back asleep, it wasn't restful. She was aware. It was sleep that wasn't sleep, maybe more of a doze. She knew time was passing. She could hear the burbles of her tank's ventilation. She could think, but she certainly wasn't awake. All the more evidence to add to the theory of being in limbo. It wouldn't have been that bad if it weren't for the fact that she now had too much time to think, to process, to relive. One especially offensive image was Sasha's recoil in the touch after the confession. Another was Anne's shocked and heartbroken face, also after the confession. Or the one where Sprig was falling to his death, which was after the confession. Mm-hmm. And Andreas' face right before Anne gave him the music box, before the confession. <laughs> That's a pretty good face. <laughs> <laughs> he takes up the entire screen. Yeah, the composition. Bends down and smiles. They make him absolutely evil. Yeah, they make that, like, really, they make him really menacing in the last episode. <laughs> it's very effective. Mm-hmm. An especially good one was the floor she stared at as the consequences of her actions slapped her across the face, as a result of the confession, of course. The scars of her mind were on replay, and the torturous part of it all was not being able to do anything about it. She couldn't break free, she couldn't cry, she couldn't gasp, she couldn't apologize, she couldn't scream, not even when everything hurt so bad. It pulsed in the middle of her ribcage and spread to her pruny fingers every time her lungs expanded. She thought it had to be a punishment for all the shit she put her friends through, and it reminded her of a story she read much too young to understand. Well, even now she would argue that she was too young, but Amphibia had aged her. Something about manipulation, politics, and running from death every few seconds changes you. It was about a supercomputer who tortured the last humans on Earth to entertain himself. In the climax, the main character, Ted, kills off everybody but himself, and in order to punish him, the computer transforms him into the ugly, amorphous blob who could not speak. Do we know what this is? I don't know what that is. It sounds so familiar. Mm-hmm. I'll find it. <laughs> the computer, Ted. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. have my phone, everybody. <laughs> yeah, you can't do anything right now. Not to say that she had killed Anne and Sasha to save them from an eternity of hell and was then turned into a forcibly mute being, but Marcy had an incredible urge to fucking wail from deep in her belly. It was a familiar feeling, not being able to get rid of the twisting sensation boiling in her veins. She was a little conflicted as to where everyone fit. In the end, she figured that if she was the great soft jelly thing, Andreas was Daddy the Deranged. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I still don't know the reference, but I don't like thinking of him as daddy. <laughs> daddy the deranged. Daddy the deranged. 
the quest and adventure we just watched the amphibious dubbed over by the arby's guy and it still got me <laughs> got me hooting and hollering oh yeah, yeah. So look it up andreas sounds crazy like the arby's guy <laughs> that is fucking crazy that reminds me friggin uh what is it daddy the what daddy the deranged daddy the deranged sounds like a slap mountain alias <laughs> Daddy 05. Don't look up Slap Mountain. Don't look up Daddy 05. <laughs> Even if you really want to. Do not message Slap Mountain to get Daddy 05 on their competition. <laughs> you don't have to. It's going to happen. It's just the natural progression of that dad's life. <laughs> the quest and adventures she went on could be the journey to the ice caverns. The cans in said caverns could be a false promise of Andreas. And Ted being paranoid and distrustful could be Marcy following Andreas Andreas's plan and and the Benny Benny eating Grister was Marcy backstabbing her friends, and Ted killing his group could be Marcy looking up ruining everything she had, and Am pushing Ted would be God putting Marcy in a tank to repent. Hurting. Thinking of Ted as the bear. <laughs> I'm thinking of Ted talks. <laughs> Her English teacher would be so proud, she'd make sure to thank them if they, she ever got out, if she was even alive, if she was able to go back to Earth, if she even wanted to, if she could function without having her chest throb every second. She sometimes wasn't sure if the pain was from the stab wound or from the crushing weight of her fuck-ups. It wasn't really in, in her to figure it out either. It was tiring, growth, character growth was so convoluted. Growing up in general was dumb. Who the fuck said she wanted to do all that junk? She was supposed to... She supposed it came to bite her in the ass, considering she was in immeasurable pain and stuck in a dumbass tube, but it didn't make her any less spiteful. <laughs> Point of the stages of grief. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. Dumbass, dumbass tube. tube. Getting progressively more and more fucking passive, aggressive. Juicing the green out of her. And so sick That's of why s- she's pruning. Andrea says, stay in the tube until you've grown out of this dumb stage of your life. <laughs> <laughs> you will come out of the tube when you've had enough. <laughs> and I'll decide when you've had enough. <laughs> I'm so fucking sick of vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> you will learn to like pickles and then you will leave the tube. <laughs> He fucking pours like a big handful of them in like fish food. <laughs> pours from his big restaurant sized white vinegar tank into the yeah. tube. See all the bubbles coming out of her? <laughs> <laughs> the good pickling will be good for you. Those will be really nicely marinated. This one will be dipped in barbecue sauce. I'll add some red onions. <laughs> Spicy. Her eyes would be so sore. <laughs> what really confused Marcy was that she thought she was doing well. She was improving Newtopia and its society. She had saved numerous people. She was learning how to connect with them. She thought she tipped the scales enough so it would lean towards the good side, so it would balance out the confession if she ever got around to it, which she fully intended not to. No. She was going to wait for the perfect moment to tell them. She was going to wait for when they were a precise mix of separated and detached from Earth. Because then it would be a moment of, Oh, Marcy, you were so silly back then, instead of a moment of, How could you? Because then it would be a moment of, Well, we can't exactly go back and finish school, instead of a moment of, I've been missing my parents, my life! Because then it wouldn't have been a fucking shit show where nothing went to plan, because then she wouldn't be here. Because then she would still have friends. Because then she would have, wouldn't have would have had to apologize. Because then she wouldn't have to rethink her morality. Because then she would have been happy. It's nice to see Marcy having some character growth. She In was so two. perfect up until the final episode. I was thinking the mm-hmm. same thing. Like That was yeah. my favorite part of the final uh, episode. They had to give her a flaw eventually. Mm-hmm. Besides being clumsy. That's pretty funny. <laughs> and she's a gamer. And being a gamer. <laughs> Her fatal flaw. 
I love the thing of her and like eating marshmallows in the bed, and then the news comes on. <laughs> Five hundred snakes have escaped the zoo, and is that a girl walking in there? <laughs> yeah, that comes really good. That was. <laughs> To say she loathed herself would be an understatement. It was more of a gene that turned on when she was old enough to realize that, that kids didn't act all weird and twitchy like she did. But fuck, did she feel fucking stupid and so fucking deluded. So fucking selfish. And, 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 and like her fucking parents, never taking into account the feelings of others, only doing what would make them feel good and safe and secure and comforted instead of actually owning up to shit that they avoided because it made them realize they were shit fucking people. Andres is going to start poking the tank with a <laughs> swear jar. <laughs> hey, he's prodding <laughs> it with a stick. I was about to say, he's like tapping it. He's pointing towards the swear jar saying, hey, wake up. <laughs> wake up. <laughs> Entertain me. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny I brought my guests in and they wanted to see the tank <laughs> <laughs> you understand you're kind of a set piece here in the palace these days <laughs> it's like when kids tap on a fishing on an aquarium mm-hmm. yeah just, just massive echoes on her end yeah, his <laughs> big <laughs> fucking <laughs> fingers <laughs> he's got a couple <laughs> buttons <laughs> on the front like a little rim game for Taco Bell <laughs> 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 yeah, he squishes him in and the Pushing rings up. flow <laughs> One of them lands on her head. <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> Ten points. Bonus. I am the king. You're keeping count, right, Marcy? <laughs> Marcy, what's my score? He put his crown on her head so she has targets to land on. <laughs> what's your score? You come in here and play like once a month. <laughs> Am I supposed to remember your fucking score? <laughs> <laughs> now, eat the pickle on the fishing line. <laughs> write it on the fog of the glass. Come on. I'll remember it if you just write it. My the new... algae's building up. You have something to work with. <laughs> <laughs> My utopian board games collection. Oh, oh. Here we have the giant. <laughs> Oh my Here God. I have the giant guess who board. Here we have the bitch in the jar. It's, it's like the chess. <laughs> it's like the ch- the giant chess board in the in the temple, but it's all guess who boards. <laughs> they have to run over and lift up these giant stone tablets. If it's not this guy, they draw all the faces themselves. <laughs> Does he have a big nose? <laughs> No, fuck, that's like 20 of them. <laughs> 20 stone tablets slam into the ground. They have to individually slam them down. Marcy, I, s- I spy I'm getting back to the story now. <laughs> Stop! And the queen gets so mad when he's playing his giant noisy guess who game in the basement. <laughs> With an incapacitated <laughs> partner. <laughs> Marcy was their do- Marcy truly was their daughter, top of her class yet emotionally inept and they- they- and unable to take real life seriously. Had some of the best people be her friends, yet she trashed them for a fantasy. Upheld a thousand year regime, believed and trusted and helped the glorified wet lizard with a brain infinitely smoother than hers. Damn. Oh, my lord. <laughs> As Andrea says, dipping his nuggets in barbecue sauce. Yeah, yeah. Smooth brain. But who's in the tube? (laughs) (laughs) It all made her so frustrated. Like when she looked back at at the minuscule errors that cost her precious points on a major assignment. Who was she to have friends? Who was she to complain about her family? Who was she to be so angry? Who was she to blame Andreas when she had willingly taken part in his plans? Who was she to act worthy of life when she carelessly threw it away in hopes that everything would turn out fine? Who the fuck was she to complain about pruny fingers when she literally had no fucking idea if she was even alive? And in, and that in itself was another can of worms she had no choice but to scarf down. She dreamt about it, being alive. Something would be chasing her. She knew she couldn't let it catch her. If it did, she knew for certain she would die. She would hide in the corners of her bed on earth only for something so hot it felt cold to drag her out by the ankles. Her short, stubby nails would scrabble uselessly at the thin sheets, and then she would wake up. Other times, she would be hanging out with Anne and Sasha. They were sweet and then some, with a flush flooding her cheeks at the softness of it all. Light, lingering touches, smug smirks, 
teasing jabs. It was like she never missed, messed anything up. The worst part was waking up. They made her feel gut-wrenchingly guilty and empty. Sometimes she would be frantically sprinting around her, her way through Andreas' castle, each turn making her more and more tired, her sticky feet slapping the floor much too loudly, and then she would sense it, and her stomach would drop to her ass, giving her another... <laughs> you like that one? Oh just... my god. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it fell in her butt cheek. Just the one, though. It's funny imagining her like fall into her ass because she's in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> Giving her another boost to keep on running. She looked back countless times, but nothing was ever there. There had to be something. She could taste it on her tongue, cold and metallic. She could feel it in the air, suffocating and damp. She could hear it rumbling in her ears. Like if she stayed in one place for too long, her eardrums would burst. In some dreams, she would be in a meadow, in a park, in a museum, in a city, in an aquarium, in a fair, in an orchard, wandering aimlessly. The air was always crisp and fresh, and it burned her nostrils. It was always night. Even if she look, couldn't look out a window, she knew it was night. Those dreams made her throat ache. She didn't know if being alive would make her feel better. If anything, knowing she might still have the opportunity to fix everything made her overwhelmed. The weight of what needed to be sa said sagged heavy on her bones. It seeped into her blood, dripped its way through her muscles, seeped out of the, her pores, and collected in the folds of her wrinkled fingertips, deep and dark, like she stuck her head, her hands in mud. They must belong to someone else. They were healed from her anxious biting her senseless picking, and her hard-earned calluses. She wondered if they were soft out of the tank. She wondered if they would look like that if she grew old. She wondered if they still knew which buttons to push on a controller. I told you she's a gamer. It's one of her vices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she wondered if they were in the same hands she used to load a crossbow with, the same hands that held her journal and pencil, the same hands that Sasha shoved away, the same hands that Anne limply held, the same hands that saved Sprig, the same hands that opened the music box. It made her stomach flip up and her mouth watered with the urge to vomit up nothing. She fucking hated it when her fingers pruned, and the worst part about it was that she couldn't fucking scream. The end. There's, an act, there's a note after the fact. Okay. Did I put Lady Gaga lyrics in here? Yes, yes I did, and I'd do it again, lol. <laughs> also, I wanted to put in a marinating joke so bad, but I feel like it would ruin the vibe. Sorry, we did that really hard for you. <laughs> yeah, we, we got you covered, buddy. Is there even a vibe for this? I read this in, like, a weird, delirious mood for sorry if it's a little choppy in places. Not that my works are smooth anyways, but y'all get it, haha. -ha. Um, tell me if there are any typos. I looked over this as best I could, but there's always one that escapes me somehow, and it's late and I'm tired. Anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed because I actually had a lot of fun writing this. Feel free to give me any feedback. Thanks for reading. Yeah, I thought it was a very good story. Sorry. Yeah, I thought it was fun. It was a very good character piece. Hell yeah. It's really hard to write a story where the character doesn't move, so you did yeah. a good job. I do like stories where people are just kind of stuck in their heads, so that was really nice. Yeah, you did a good job. Thank yeah. you for submitting that story. It was incredible. I'd rate that 400 points on the water ring game. <laughs> Hard to do. It's hard to get on the on the tubes. It's true, it's true. I'm trying to remember what my writing was. I had it fucking thought up and everything. Shit. There's something about Arby's. There's something about the tube. <laughs> uh, I rate that two red peppers out of two in the jar <laughs> for seasoning purposes. <laughs> See, I write that seven swishes as he takes her out and puts her in a bag while he queen cleans the tank. <laughs> <laughs> like the giant, he has a giant like fish scoop. Yeah. <laughs> he just like puts her in a All plastic right. bag and ties it as he so he can clean it with a giant. <laughs> This story is called Let's Play by Unknown Aspect. It's spelled U-N-O-W-N-A-S-P-E-C-T.
Is that on Archive of Our Own or fanfiction.net? It's Archive of Our Own. This was submitted Everyone by the Red... Everyone seems to use that one. Huh? Everyone seems to use that. I've never used it. Oh, that, that site? Yeah. Yeah. I bet there's I bet there's tons of untapped stuff we haven't even bothered to look at. Probably. Like, I only use fanfiction's app. I wonder if Archive has an app. Archive of Our Own, I've checked out a few times. It's a lot more sparse than uh, fanfiction, at mm-hmm. least in terms of topic. And especially, I don't think it has like a crossover section uh, specifically. Mm. I gotcha. Mm. Okay, and the redditor's name is also Storm Carthage. Thank you for submitting a story for our jam. Yeah, thank you. This is a pretty long one. It's above the limit, so I'm just going to read a little bit of it. I don't know. I will not read the summary. I'll just go ahead and read the story. Okay. Anne felt a drip of sweat roll down her forehead. Through her face mask, she watched the other side, shifting their lineup. She smiled. It was cute, really, that they thought they could try and trick her. She saw straight through their setup. She knew exactly what to do. One step to the right, and she was in perfect position. Hike! The snap came in, and the quarterback stuffed the ball into her stomach. As soon as she had the ball, there was already a huge dude in her face. She twisted and shrugged off his hit, regaining her balance as she stumbled behind her. This started off of so much fucking phallic imagery in my head, <laughs> holy shit. I thought it was like a like a face mask, not a football helmet. <laughs> yes, the quarterback <laughs> stuffed his balls into his stomach. <laughs> they did say that. Balls deep. In front of her, a gap opened up between her two linemen and she shot through it. She lowered her shoulder into a linebacker and dragged the girl for a few yards until she let go. The trenches were now behind her and all that stood between her and the end zone was one poor safety. She almost wanted to laugh. Speeding up, all she had to do was land one precise hit and the safety bounced off of her. This is a... It's a lot of football jargon. (laughs) This is Eye Shield 21 crossover. (laughs) That's what I was trying to think of. She looked over her shoulder and saw the opponents defeated, lazily chasing her. Anne turned backwards and took a few skips before spreading her arms and falling backwards into the end zone. Yo! (laughs) She tilted her head up just enough to read the scoreboard. Quarter five. Sco- hold on <laughs> quarter five <laughs> score 33 to 27 victory quarter five I'm mad is that I... how quarters work in the f- in no. football no no it's a quarter <laughs> one of well, four be... <laughs> my brain is so mad the minute that snapped I was like wait is that how quarters well, I there's don't know. Overtime, overtime but there's not like a fifth quarter unless Someone's really <laughs> stupid and mad. Quarter I'm five. It up. That no, is... I'll look it up. You keep reading. Okay. Right behind her, Anne saw a cavalry charge of her own teammates, and before she could react, she was lifted to her feet and mobbed by players and cheerleaders, with one notable exception. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw a blondie looking at her in the crowd with a soft smile. Anne blinked, and suddenly the blonde made a face, sticking her tongue out, and then was swept out of view as the crowd pushed her around. On Pre-game fifth quarter is eight minutes, four on offense, four on defense. Okay. Oh, okay. Or I guess that's also overtime. But they they should really just call it overtime. Not the fifth quarter. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> that just really, like attacks the idea of jocks not being intelligent. <laughs> not really intelligent. But I'm sorry, we doubted you, fanfic writer. <laughs> After the crowd settled down, people started to leave or talk in groups, and Anne was left waiting around for her friends. She barely had time to take a step before someone jumped at her. Anne! Marcy shouted midair. It took all of Anne's strength to catch her and place her calmly on... Is it on or Anne? Anne. Yeah. Sorry, Anne. <laughs> yeah, just remember I'm that. sorry, Anne. Yeah. Aw, oh, thanks, Marmar. Thanks for coming. Yeah, of course. I was so exciting. I loved it when... When... Anne laughed as Marcy struggled to explain one thing that happened. Marcy, you don't have to understand football. I just like seeing you here. I feel that so hard. I'm sorry, Anne. I just can't get my head around it. I don't think anyone can. She's supposed to be the smart one. It takes me back to our varsity days where we were working the concession stand. <laughs> oh, yeah, we worked the football concession stand but didn't give a shit about the football game ever. <laughs> no, not at all. We would just dick around until like halftime and people would come for nachos and hot dogs. Of course. We'd make jokes about how our teachers would be great anime characters. (laughs) Uh, Football. (laughs) 
back, back in my prime, I could throw a football over those mountains. <laughs> God, I hope Uncle Rico shows up in this fanfic. Marcy smiled. It was nice to know that Anne understood, and she tried to. Hey, Meathead! Hey, Marcy! Sasha appeared behind them, suddenly kind of like a ghost. She scanned the crowd to make sure no one was paying attention to them, then gave Anne a kiss on the cheek, <gasps> and Marcy one on the forehead. <gasps> oh, oh, no! <laughs> There's this weirdo. There's this weirdo walking around, kind of pudgy and wearing a loud, obnoxious jacket. Said he's looking for you. <laughs> what the fuck? There's this weirdo. He's pudgy and he's got an orange jacket, and I don't like him. <laughs> a loud, obnoxious jacket. Not necessarily orange. I just that's just my go-to color, I guess. <laughs> this is a weird little red dude looking for you. He's really old. <laughs> He keeps going, Man, where is she? He keeps apologizing to me for some reason. I'm sorry, Marcy. I just need a... I'm, I'm Sasha. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sasha. Right, right. I didn't mean to call you Marcy. It just kind of happened. You yeah, all look the same. <laughs> Uh, okay, Sash, I don't think I want to... Oh, and he said he's with Valley U. Really? Well, is he for real? Should I talk to him? Well, duh. As Anne started to leave, Sasha made a quiet whispering noise and pouted slightly, trying her best to make Anne didn't notice. Huh? Oh. Anne jumped back and grabbed Sasha's hand. He tilted upwards and she kissed Sasha on the lips, giving her a soft... <gasps> giving her a soft bite as she left. God damn. Damn. <laughs> See you soon. I'll get you later, Mar. Moi. She blew them a kiss and ran off. Why is Mar being relegated to the third wheel, but also being sexualized? She'll, she'll get to her later. Okay. <laughs> Once Anne was safely out of earshot, Marcy breathed deeply and asked a question that was bothering her. Sasha? Yes, Marcy? Valley University, that's like 3,500 miles away from here, correct? Oh, no. Sounds right. You'd know better. That's interesting. Very interesting. Very, very... Marcy, what's wrong? Anne wandered around searching when the man that Sasha had clearly been talking about walked up to her and grabbed her hand. Marcy's gonna show her true colors. Anne Boonchoy, the tie terror! Mrs. Watwood... <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> tie terror! That's pretty good. That's great. Anne Boonchoy, the tie terror! Miss Wartwood football. It is good to meet you. Oh, so they're in Wartwood. I thought they were like in the human world. Same. I thought so too. The tie terror. He was in fact pudgy and dressed in college gear. What is it? He's going to the Wartwood College? Wait, was was no. No. Wait. There is a Wartwood College. Yeah, I know there's the one in the Newtopia. But like Is that Valley University? I don't think so. But it's also Amphibia. I don't think they're in Amphibia because it's a. I don't feel like Amphibia is 3,500 miles. Well, actually, when they. When Sprig saw the robot follow them back into town, he said, We were hundreds of miles from here. Oh. Okay. So they're at least. It's at least hundreds of miles wide. It could be any number of things. We'll keep. We'll get invested. Uh. So after he said the Thai terror, she said, No one calls said, me that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no one calls me that. Oh, but they will when I'm done with you. Name's Toadstool, but you can call me Mayor. <laughs> he offered her a card, which Anne took reluctantly. You know who I am, girl. Anne wondered if the southern accent was real or put up to make him seem more folksy. <laughs> That's Bill Dotrieve. Oh, no. Toadie. No clue. Fair enough. Like I say, folks call me Mayor Toadstool. I work with Valley U football. You familiar? With the best college football team in the country? Yeah, I've heard of you. The country well, of Amphibia. <laughs> my job is to keep an eye out for talent out here. I heard your name mentioned once or twice, and I figured I'd see if it was all true. I don't plan on trying any tricks or anything. You are very good, Anna, and I would be delighted if you continued your studies with us at Valley. What? But I've only been playing for a year. Exactly why I gotta get in now. Hell, I'm embarrassed I'm only getting in now. 
if you're as good as I think you are, and the second you play a game in senior year, half a dozen folks like me will be pestering you to get you to come to their school. But you always remember the people who you found early. <laughs> <laughs> I was winning the punctuation so bad. <laughs> I really like this AU we're in. Where Anne's a professional football high schooler, and she's got all the girls at her, at her beck and call. Yeah, like, damn. And also Toadstool's a, a college <laughs> recruiter. <laughs> yeah, it's a good fit for him. <laughs> I mean, of course I'm interested, but I still don't get why me, Anne explained. She felt like she was asleep and was searching for the right words to wake herself up. Mare laughed from his stomach. Ah, 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 listen to me, Anne. Mare scuttled right next to her and put an arm around her back. <laughs> like waist high. If I can say, if this is a movie reference, I don't get it. The only two football movies I've seen are Radio and The Longest Yard starring Adam Sandler. <laughs> and I don't think it's either one of those. We got Waterboy starring Adam Sandler. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's also not that. <laughs> but that's a third it could football be. movie. <laughs> I can't wait to Hold on, he's in a swamp. It could be Waterboy. <laughs> I can't wait for Marcy to go home to hop up and go. <laughs> Miss, Mrs. Boon Choi doesn't approve of that nasty Marcy Wu. I'm sorry, it put us on a dangerous road. <laughs> Nonsense, Anne. I discovered electricity. <laughs> Anne Franklin is the devil. <laughs> Mom, my mama said alligators are ornery because they don't have a toothbrush for all their teeth. <laughs> and Marcy laughs at her. <laughs> And then she goes, Mama's not wrong! And she tackles her. <laughs> you can't date that Sasha Waybright. She's a delinquent. Sasha Waybright is the devil! <laughs> I love that woman. Go on. People are strange, Anne. And no one really knows what drives them. But one thing I know is, we all seem to want to be great. And every time I find a high schooler like you and watch them destroy some fools on the field, I know why I'm the greatest at my job. So it's all about you, then. It doesn't seem like the kind of thing you want to be telling your recruits. Mare shrugged. You want to know why you... Answer is, I don't know. But here I am, and here you are. Don't ask why, and ask how, and ask for money. More money! You're a high schooler. You like money, don't you? Hey, you! A squeaky yet grizzled voice called in. Get out of here, toadstool. <laughs> yes, yeah, scram! A much higher pitched voice screamed. Just want... <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, scram! A much higher pitched voice screamed. That's probably Polly. Yeah, scram! Polly and Sprig. Oh. My best friends. Just wanted a word with your girl, Hoppadiah. No need to get twisty. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you, Polly. <laughs> Steven's having a meltdown. <laughs> Think of this quote-unquote recruiter <laughs> calling this girl for a one-on-one. I'm just, I just want time I with your you, girl. I thought you were having a meltdown because the the, the water boy Hapadaya AU is coming in. <laughs> you stay away from that toadstool. That toadstool is the devil! <laughs> the devil! <laughs> you really did do a number bringing up the water boy. <laughs> Little girl growled at him. Mare backed off and pulled a 20 out of his jacket pocket and shoved it in Anne's hand. Here, you earned it. Buy your little girlfriend something nice. And what did he make you do? What? But no one knows that. I told you, Anna. I am the greatest. He belly laughed again and walked off. <laughs> I am the greatest. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> He watched her? I told you it. <laughs> I am the greatest. I see everything. <laughs> He's a freak. Hop, hop, we won. No, Anne. You won. You and your teammates. <laughs> That's not a... Why is he teaching her that way? That's not a contradiction. No, Anne. You won. They did nothing but hold you back. <laughs> Go oh. to my school. Pop, <laughs> pop, you. Okay, I thought he was just treating her like an idiot. Let me finish idiot. my sentence. That's fine. Pop's <laughs> explaining. Yeah, yeah. So oh, am I. 
<laughs> he said, no, and you won. You and your teammates. I was just on the sidelines rooting for you. Okay. <laughs> so he did not. I thought he was just treating her like an idiot. It's like, hop on my foot. No, and you won. <laughs> Hapaniah Planter was the coach of the Wartwood High School football team. Yes, yes, Woo! yes. He was usually wise and knowledgeable, although prone to goofing up or making a fool of himself. Him in like one of those track sweaters with a little hat. That is so goddamn good. He's the perfect form for it. He looks a lot like our high school football coach in a way. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> With, like the slides on. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Throwing his clipboard down. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. Uh, oh, no. He's coach. Rock. His he, story rocks. He can accompany Ian, them to you were amazing, away. Spriggs said. I like the part where you knocked a guy to the ground. <laughs> uh, Polly said with gritted teeth and a menacing smile. <laughs> he didn't have a break. It's in, a shame. Yeah. That Sprig impression was really good. I know. It's sad. <laughs> Oh, hush, you two, Hop Pop said, waving his arms around. What did the mayor want to talk to you about? Oh, yeah, Ann offered him the business card. He said he was looking for me at Valley U. Hmm. Hop Pop looked at the <laughs> card. Well, I'll be, Ann. You've sure done it. What do you mean? Now let me look at the 20 he gave you. <laughs> if Valley likes I'll what they see. I'll give back later. <laughs> If Valley likes what they see, I guess that significantly raises your odds of having real success in this business. Anne felt her eyes growing in real time. She had been trying to contain her excitement, but if Hot Pop said it was for real, then she was sure of it. Guys, guys, come with me. When Anne returned to Marcy and Sasha, they were standing around dumbly with their arm, with their pinkies interlocked. Anne grabbed them both by the arm and pulled them under the bleachers, a safe hiding spot they had been using since they were tiny. Anne was bubbling with excitement. She sat down on her knees and tapped her legs again and again until the other two had settled down. Come on, meathead. We're dying to hear what got you all riled up. That weird toad he called Mayor Toadstool? And he thinks I can play for him at Valley, Anne said, almost shrieking. No way! Sasha crawled over and hugged her. That's so exciting! Now kiss Marcy. She's yeah, been waiting. Yeah, Marcy added, joining in on the outside of the hug. <laughs> Poor Marcy. <laughs> Aw, damn. Are you going to take it? I mean, yeah, they're legendary, Sasha explained. But there's a lot of great schools, and I'm sure you'll get a ton of offers, right? Anne shrugged. I mean, hopefully, but this is going to be a real contender for sure. Marcy looked down and thought for a second. Anne was starting to get worried about her. Then she snapped back up. I can't believe it. This is the real deal. Oh, Anne, I'm so proud of you. She squished her face into Anne's chest. Anne shot Sasha a goofy look, and Sasha smiled back. Anne reached around and squished Marcy closer. All is fair in love and war. Uh, this is like a time skip, I think. And we're like a quarter of the way through, so this might actually be a good place to stop on this story. Alrighty. No, we don't yeah. get this. As great as it was. <laughs> I really <laughs> like that story, but the word limit really did exceed yeah. uh, our uh, criteria. It, it takes a long time to even read 2,000 words, so... Maybe, maybe we'll come back to it at a later date because I really did like that story. Yeah, that was that was everything awesome. That was uh, awesome. When season three comes up, I'm sure we can do another one. Probably. Steven, you going to draw Ann in the football uniform later? Oh, absolutely. I, I do want to <laughs> draw Amphibious, though. Yeah. Bro- we, got, we got to do a drawing oh, yeah. episode. We got to get a... Uh, Gotta get somebody cool on for the drawing line. True, true. Amphibolicious. Amphibolicious. I rate that story um, a perfect water boy score out of 10. <laughs> I rate that. Graham, Graham spitting the cooler. <laughs> I rate that a pair of. I rate that a fresh pair of $400. Gucci slides on Hop Pop and he stands out in the cold with his clipboard. <laughs> with like the pen behind his ear and the <laughs> and the sweater. Oh no, so we don't pay the students. <laughs> we just take donations. Speaking of and that twenty, hand it over. <laughs> I'm gonna need that. I need to inspect it for authenticity. What do you mean high school football makes millions of dollars a year but doesn't pay their students? Why would we? <laughs> <laughs> Teaching's a lot of work. <laughs> All right, that eight quarters out of four. <laughs> oh no, this money doesn't go towards the teachers. It goes through the, the, the coaches. <laughs> Me. 
I need it. I, I don't know what you want me to say. I need it. <laughs> you want me to do my job for free? <laughs> for free? <laughs> Who was the author of that one again? That was... For some reason, Reddit has two types of messages. So I got my other message <laughs> inbox. Weird. That was unknown aspects. Unknown aspects. Thank you, buddy. We Thank appreciate you. the participation. Yes. Um... I think we got one more? Yep. If you want, you can read this one because I just read and you have a clear speaking voice. Okay. I can do that unless Steven wants to read. Uh, let's see. How long is it? It's like 2K words. I can read it if you can, but I'm just asking if you wanted to read. I'm down to read, but if you want to read. Uh, I don't mind reading. Okay. Uh-huh. I can send you a link if you want. Uh-huh. Okay. So why am I fine? Oh, you got him. Oh, shit. <laughs> Who submitted this? It says right there. Informed Terran. There we go. Dealing in trust and bad faith. Thank you for submitting to the Amphibia Jam. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, bud. Now Reddit, you can begin. The Reddit is ITGuy42. ITGuy42. Go check them out. See, on second thought, you should probably read this. My voice is dead. Yeah, the only nutrients you've had today are Burger King and marshmallows. Yeah. (laughs) So, why am I flying to Los Angeles, director? The agent asked over the phone. The director replied, We have been monitoring FBI communications and and determined they might have come across something interesting that falls under FBI jurisdiction. I certainly hope it isn't something Muni-related again. He turned to his flight attendant. Muni? Oh, M-E-W-N-I. Shit. Oh, that's from, that's fucking Star Versus. There we go. Rum and Pit. to be our Star Versus rocks. translator. Yeah, okay. neither of us have seen that. Mm-hmm. The director laughed. Sure, me's favorite drink. You really are his grandson. He chuckled. You, you should see Shooting Star. She must go through several glasses a day ever since Trembley actually got her a seat in Congress. Steven, what's that mean? That I don't know. <laughs> Those characters don't ring a bell. Is Shooting Star not Star Butterfly? No. Oh. Maybe it's My Pony. My Little Pony. I don't know. I don't know. I'm okay, not sure. Dude. I'm not sure. I don't know a Shooting <laughs> Star and My Little Pony either. <laughs> uh... I don't blame. I don't blame her. Mick McGucket would have been impeached over the Mooney affair if it wasn't for her. Oh no! Is McGucket a star character? He's not a star character. He's a. He's from a different fucking world. Oh, we got a whole smorgasbord of crossovers here. <laughs> Elias knows who McGucket is. I think so. Is it the mayor from Paw Patrol? <laughs> it's not. We're not talking about the mayor from Paw Patrol. How many episodes of the podcast can we bring that up? I will always bring up mayor whatever his name is. <laughs> yeah, me too. How's the old man and my dear secretary of the treasury? The director smiled but shook his head. Stressed. I swear he never should have run. Madam Northwest is trying to get Senator Gleeful in the Senate to pass a new budget, so... He received his glass and took a drink. So no pay this month? (laughs) She can cover for you. You are on her airplane, after all. Now, about that package... (laughs) Sorry, I scrolled up to see what things are in. It says Gravity Falls. Yeah. But there's there's a lot going on. Who's McGucket? McGucket and Gravity Falls. Okay, that's all I needed to know. Okay, okay. Isn't he the old man? His old his, man McGucket. Yeah, old man McGucket. <laughs> Maybe shooting the stars Mabel or something. I don't know. I haven't seen that show oh, either. Yeah. Oh yeah, true shit. Oh, that's right. Fuck. Okay, okay. And Madam Northwest isn't that Pacifica? Mm-hmm. See, yeah. I know some things. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting it. You smooth, you smooth. We did watch an episode for our Gravity Falls episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hell yeah. We'll get around to it. She can cover for you. You are on her airplane, after all. Now, about that package? The agent pulled out a glass cylinder from his bag. Inside, a small statue. He gave it a good long look. 
I have it here, Grunkle Ford. Shrunk it with my flashlight. He isn't going anywhere. <laughs> Laugh audibly. I'm, I'm trying to keep it in so you can read. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I'm Grunkle, s- Grunkle Ford's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And there's a page break. I'm sorry, I just came out with a really stupid rhyme from a gucket. I'm saving it for my fucking Halloween fanfic. It's too good. Now we okay. know it's a Gravity Falls fanfic. It's, it's not gonna be. Good. It's gonna have a Gravity Falls character, but it's not gonna Named be Gravity McGucket. Falls. Huh? Named McGucket. <laughs> Fuck it, McGucket. Oh, more, 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 more. The small interrogation room was quiet. Anne looked around. A small table in the center, her on one side and an empty seat on the other. And an FBI interrogation room. <laughs> With a one-way mirror. What do you know about this frog? They turn around the mirror of Hop Pop. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't do nothing. When you brought him to the human world, we were going to ignore him, but he's been causing too much trouble. <laughs> he keeps old. looking at women and going... I told you to keep that freak inside your house and we wouldn't have any problems. <laughs> you better not rat me out, shooting star. <laughs> Keeps going out in town and causing people trouble. And then apologizing. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm really sorry, getting on everybody's lady. nerves. <laughs> Why are you a freak? <laughs> <laughs> and looked around small table on two her sides. One wall had a flat screen television with the FBI emblem displayed and the other a co- court nice. board with some pinned up flyers. FBI warning, watch out for spies. Keep America healthy. Get the Northwest brand gizmo COVID vaccine courtesy of <laughs> President <laughs> Fiddleford McGucket. <laughs> I love his name so much. The gizmo vaccine. <laughs> It's like bullshit made-up vaccine by McGucket. Everybody get it. <laughs> and for those of you who haven't seen Gravity Falls, McGucket is like, in the present day of Gravity Falls, a fucking homeless hillbilly man. <laughs> so the concept of him making a COVID vaccine. <laughs> so Middle funny. Ford McGucket. <laughs> Join the American Expeditionary Force on Muni. Give Mina Loveberry a slap across the face. FPI versus FPI baseball game next month. Sign up now. What does FPI stand for? It's just a different federal investigation. Federal paranormal investigation? I don't know. That makes sense. Not federal penis investigator? <laughs> That's hot pop. Why would Ann be in there then? <laughs> federal pop what do you investigation. Know about <laughs> federal. <laughs> yeah, federal pop investigators. <laughs> A crew of the most of America's elitist hunting down one rogue frog. <laughs> and you called them on me. Anybody but the FBI. You called the FBI. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you know what FBI stands for? <laughs> do you know what this means? Do you know what they'll do to me? Do you know? Do you know? Do you realize? <laughs> If the ginner, if the government sees those pictures of our house, and we would have to move. No, not not Bob Pop. Anything with that? What you did was stuck a knife in my back and killed me, Bob Pop. Oh man! I want every goddamn picture off the internet. I want your accusations on the internet! No, 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 no! Bob didn't say that. That was Chris. That was Ann. That was Ann. <laughs> That's Hot Pop. Ann fucking... accidentally uploaded Hot Pops in the house. Oh. And everyone saw the horrible conditions it was in. Do you know if those people see our farm? Hot Pop came in and said, What's going on in here? <laughs> and how did people see our stump? People, people keep calling on the crow phone, saying you're over here, saying you're gonna kill yourself. What? Holy shit! I'm cutting this thing down. Hop, hop, no! Yes. <laughs> 
is such a fucking meme. I love it. The squat oh. little body marching over to unplug the internet. My fucking abs are... And, and trying to film on her piss-stained eye toy. <laughs> Holy fuck. Chris Ann. <laughs> <laughs> Ann Chan. Oh no, Chris Boon Chan. Chris Tan. Oh my fucking Chris god. Chris Chan. There you go. Ann stared at the one main mirror across from her. On the other end, she could hear arguing between the FBI agents that brought her in for questioning and another unfamiliar voice. When the arguing stopped, the door opened. Hey there, he chuckled. Sorry for the delay. He closed the door behind him and took a seat across from from Anne. Unlike the other agents, he was dressed casual. Jean pants, a flannel shirt, and a puffy vest. <gasps> That's dipped up. Whoa! That's dipped up. He's in the FBI. Oh, oh. damn. He was the same height, I'm sure. <laughs> he walks same... in, puts the door behind him. He's like one foot tall. Hot the pop. same voice. He's an equal height to Hot Pop, yeah. No, the hot same pop. grown man voice. I want him shorter than Hot Pop. I want Hot Pop to still be able to look him down. <laughs> Just ever so slightly. <laughs> Dipper's voice never bothered me. I never I never heard it, but I hear everybody mm. say that. That's like really old sounding. I, yeah, I don't get it either. It, it's fine, but it is like when you just hear it for the first time, it's off-putting. Mm. But it, it works for the character. It's just like, like um, how... Mabel, all I, all I could hear for like the first episode I watched was uh, Lisa Belcher. Oh, yeah, it's Louise. her doing the exact same voice. Yeah, Louise Belcher. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, it, you, you get used to it. Yeah. There's some character that has a, like the live action, like a live action show that has the same voice actor that just sounds like her too. I can't remember what it is anymore, though. Definitely Mabel in my head now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see. He pulled out a tablet from his bag, a large pine tree sticker on the back. The FBI emblem on the television was replaced by that of the FPI, a simplistic yet striking image of an eagle looking through a magnifying glass. <laughs> Is it holding it in its talons? It must be. There we go, he turned to her. My name is Mason Pines, Federal Paranormal Investigations. I was right. Oh, and you must be... Yeah. She stayed silent. Oh, not the talkative type? Anne leaned over to him. Nope. <laughs> well, one word is a start. Tell me, Anne. She crossed her arms and leaned back. He took note. Anne, short for something? Annabelle? Angeline? Anne? Um, okay. You know, <laughs> my friends call me Dipper. She okay. raised an eyebrow. <laughs> Dipper? <laughs> he leaned in closer to her. He then lifted up his hair and sh- to show his forehead. Anne stared at, for, at it for a moment, then she burst out in laughter. Your forehead, oh my gosh. And they say the light pollution in L.A. blocks out the stars. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. Someone drew on your face with a permanent marker? Dipper smiled, having gotten her to open up. Nope, birthmark. Had it since day one. <laughs> Anne couldn't stop laughing. And you like that name? Talk about paranormal. <laughs> hey now, it's, it beats Mason. It's 2020, not 1920. And you're a secret agent, and deep in her voice. The numbers, Mason, what do they mean? They both laughed. And those clothes you're wearing, are you a lumberjack on the weekends? She's really getting into him. I was about to say, Anne is being really antagonistic (laughs) towards this kid half her height. I'm I'm pretty sure they're all legal adults. Of course, I'm sure he isn't good at all. No, he's exactly the same height, but he has a chin stubble. (laughs) (laughs) He's like all head. She (laughs) flips his fucking head off and calls him an idiot. (laughs) I just flew in from Oregon, visiting a close friend of mine. She could cut through a redwood tree with a single swing of an axe. I thought, I thought it was Anne saying, I just flew in from Stupid Town. My name's different. <laughs> like some, some other antagonistic shit. <laughs> she hates the fuzz. <laughs> Anne let out a long whistle. Someone whistle, I can't whistle. Magnus is gonna... Good enough. <laughs> yeah, the resident cat's here intruding on our business his ears perk up every time you stumble over your words 
He just likes whistling, or he like comes when you say a whistle. His head's on a rotary. <laughs> He's needed. <laughs> Impressive. I wonder if Sasha can do that. Sasha? Nothing. Dipper set up. I know I'm a fad, but <laughs> I only want to help you, Anne. You, your friends. Prove it then, Anne proclaimed. Dipper nodded. All right. He took out a pen from his pocket. Anne watched as he twisted the top. Anne watched as he carefully drew an image of Family Guy. <laughs> as he Would a fed draw a funny guy like this? <laughs> as he put his palm on the table and began slamming the pen in between each of his fingers at a, <laughs> at a rising pace. <laughs> see? See, feds would never take this kind of risk. <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice the pen is actually clicked in, so this is very dangerous, Anne. <laughs> Really, I'm smearing the table with ink. (laughs) Anne watched as he twisted the top. Suddenly, a tiny electric arc sparked across the room and even under the table. The lights flickered and the television shattered and broke down. That should take care of every FBI bug in the room. Just (laughs) you and me. Okay, I believe you. Did fucking McGuckin make him that? (laughs) This EMP in a pen? Yeah. EM pen. Really? Well, it's not like you would believe me. Dipper smiled. Try me. Have you ever handled something so bizarre, so out of this world? Anne asked. Well, I was on Muni during a Loveberry Coop last year. Don't mean to brag, but I was the one who stopped Princess Star from destroying the magic. Helped stop a monster genocide as well. Anne crossed her arms. Please, Dipper. Dipper. (laughs) Everyone knows about Muni. Anything else? He nodded. All right, then. Well, when I was a kid, just shy of your age, my twin sister and I went to this sleepy town called Gravity Falls. There, we discovered a town full of weird oddities and mysteries, but the biggest was that of our great uncle secretly built a portal to another world. Here's the kicker. It was actually a trap by an evil demon named Bill Cipher to merge our worlds together and destroy all of reality. Weird Mageddon barely stopped him, almost died trying. Gravity Falls spoilers, by the way, I guess. Weird Mageddon? Yes, in a vent and burst out <clears throat> laughing. That's even lamer than some magical princess from another dimension destroying all the magic. Bill Cipher destroying reality. Dipper took a deep breath. He then reached into his bag and took out the glass cylinder. Inside was a small stone sculpture. He placed it on the table for Anne to see. She stopped and turned to it, still grinning. So, who's the Illuminati mascot here? (laughs) This is Bill Cipher, said Dipper. So, you keep a sculpture of the demon that tried to kill you? Currently, in transport to a secure location. But this little prison of his is stronger than steel. Dipper gave it a tap. Trapped in stone, he turned to her. I gave my show and tell. Now tell me, where have you been? Anne stared at him in disbelief. Seriously? What do you mean? I mean this, Anne pointed at Bill in disbelief. Some dumb prop for kids? Who do you take me for? (laughs) Dumb idiot, stupid. Stupid backwater, backwoods, gay. (laughs) What? (laughs) Someone who's been through a lot, and I can tell, trust me. I'm simply here to help, Anne. That's my job. Really? I'm telling the truth. She rolled her eyes. I heard all that before. People like you, who come and make you think they want to help, only to lie and betray you in the end. Anne stood up. A sudden gush of wind kicked up in the isolated room as a small blue aura surrounded her. I won't be the fool again. Not by Sasha, Hot Pop, Marcy, or you, Dipper. I want the truth. Whoa now, Anne. That is the truth. No, it isn't. Anne grabbed the glass container. (laughs) I don't like it, so it's wrong. (laughs) It's wrong. You're wrong. It's not real. You think I trust this little midget, huh? Really, that many deaths over a piece of fabric on your face? 
He didn't laugh. No, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> God damn. I <laughs> just collect what that even was. Thanks for the pity laugh. It's not pity laugh. I just <laughs> it Anne just grabbed clicked. the glass container. Dipper quickly rushed to take it from her, but her the empowered Anne tossed him across the room. She took the container and hurled it at the cork board with the full strength of her power. Oh, no, no, Anne, don't let go. The hardened bulletproof glass broke open, and the small <laughs> statue of Bill fell to the floor. It shattered into pieces. Dipper struggled to stand back up and stared at Anne in horror as she calmed back down. Why did you do that? You have no idea what you've done! You shouldn't have showed her it, dumbass. <laughs> he quickly turned to his wrist and activated his watch. I broke your dumb nacho chip statue. <laughs> Page break. Ah, uh, killed him. That is so fucking mean. She's been hurt. The lights went off. In a second, Anne raised her head out of, off the table, wondering how she returned to her seat. She looked across to see Dipper's head laying on the table. As she went to check on him, his head snapped up and stared at her. Hello, Anne, he said with a higher-pitched voice as he stared at her with yellow cat-like eyes. Agent Pines? Dipper? Dipper? He laughed as he stood up and dusted himself off. Well, would you look at that? Pine tree here at a growth spurt, he sat on the table and turned to her with a creepy grin. But no, the name's Bill. Bill Cipher. And gasped. <gasps> he was telling the truth! <laughs> Good one, Now you're gonna get bullied, Anne. <laughs> He's gonna noogie you so hard. Noogie all the blue out of you. I wish he still was in disbelief and was like, oh, what kind of circus act are you putting on here, kid? <laughs> Like when Amen Mo smelled the ge- smelled the noxious powder that made him pass out, and then he wakes up and immediately goes back into unboxing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, that was really scary, guys. Anyway, it wasn't next to you. <laughs> Don't blew. watch Ahmed Mo, please. Watch that one video link in the description with timestamp. It's not. <laughs> Do you want to edit the episode? No, no, no. My legacy precedes me. He pulled out a dollar and signed the just under the eye of Providence with a pen. My autograph, but don't think I haven't heard of you, Anne Boon Choi of Amphibia. <laughs> How did you know? Tis, tis, Anne. Am I doing a good Bill Cipher? Uh, he's he's actually, like, really high pitched. He's like, ah. I just assumed he was British. Nah. Uh, <laughs> he looks British. <laughs> Steven's got it, yeah, he's like, Tiss, 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 Anne. I'm always watching. The girl who traveled to Amphibia on her 13th birthday, who battled Sasha and defeated the Toads, who traveled to Newtopia, only to be betrayed by her very friend who stranded all of them in another dimension. She sank into her seat. Bill knows so much. do know. (laughs) Tough luck, kid. I mean, hey, you made it back to Earth. As for Sasha and Marcy, well... Wait, what do you know about them? Is Marcy alive? He smiled. Better. He pointed at the television on the wall. Video played of Sasha and Grime battling through a swarm of robot frogs as General Yunnan and Lady Olivia carried an unconscious Marcy. Sasha! Marcy! Bill spoke. You know, your friends won't last long. King Andreas will crush them. Dimensional conquest so small-minded, but without you and those powers you have, might as well say goodbye to them. I have to get back to them, but the box. Psst, the calamity box. What a calamity. He waited for a laugh. What you need is me, kid. (laughs) Nobody (laughs) laughed. You? Bill pointed to himself. Hello, powerful demon here. Simple. I'll make you a deal. Give me that useless box, and I'll return you to Amphibia, give Andreas the boot, and you could live happily ever after with your friends of that frog family of yours. Bill extended his hand out to her. He smiled. What do you say? And you know the box is all powerful. He wouldn't want it if he wasn't a demon. (laughs) Oh, I guess the best way to describe uh, Bill's voice in a way that... Uh, you would know is he, it sounds exactly like King from Owl House. They're the exact same voice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. E. I love King. Mm. 
Well, she stared. She started at his hand. Ever tempted, she slowly reached over to shake his hand, but just as she did, an alarm on his watch activated. Bill looked at it. What is that? From the shadows, a ghost of Dipper emerged and pulled Bill's true form right Whoa. out of his body. Dipper's body fell to the ground as Ghost Dipper and Bill fought. <laughs> Dipper tried to overpower the isosceles monster, but Bill morphed into more arms and grabbed hold of him instead. Bill prepared to get rid of him for good. Too late, Pine Tree. You ain't the hero of this story anymore. A soft whisper echoed to Bill. I am. Bill turned to Anne as she transformed. Her hair turned blue and she gave out a bright Ooh. blue aura. Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan. I'm glad we got through the finale before we started. Oh, absolutely. I knew this was going to happen 100%. <laughs> Everyone wants to use Super Saiyan. It's Hell cool. Yeah. She's animated really well. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, her frames per second went up and I was like, whoa. <laughs> I said, Disney, where are you hiding this budget? <laughs> She raised her head and star stared right at the surprised Bill. In an instant, she sprang forward with a calamity power punch. Not again! Bill shattered into pieces. Dipper looked on in shock and at Anne's calamity form before either of them realized what was happening. One final voice yelled out, I'll be watching! Suddenly, they both woke up, lying where they originally were. Both turned to see the statue was now back in one piece. Dipper rushed to grab a spare container and quickly placed Bill back in. He sighed in relief and sat back down in his chair. Anne did the same. Would he have... Bill? Dipper shook his head. You can't trust Bill. I made the same mistake before. We're lucky you didn't. I... I almost did. My friends. I have to help them. Let me help you, Anne. Can I trust you, Agent Dipper? He turned to on his tablet. All I really ask is a chance to earn it. Anne nodded. Okay, then. So, um, Amphibia, where do you like to begin? The end! Woo! Wow. What an incredibly gripping story. I'm glad McGuckin is the president. I can see why so many people always like to write Bill Cipher. He's in so many crossovers. Mm. Um, He's a popular He's character. I like that setup. That was fun. Like it the was. interview at the FBI table. Mm -hmm. it's pretty fun. Yeah. Grunkle four. <laughs> Fiddle fur. <laughs> I rate that a gizmo vaccine out of uh, Corona vaccine. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> the most functional vaccine. <laughs> I rate that Dipper trying to show Anne funny videos on his phone to make her break, but she won't do it. <laughs> she puts on Try Not to Laugh Challenge number seven, and Anne just dead fans at him. <laughs> <laughs> I rate that Anne's scathing review of Dipper's life right in front of him. <laughs> out of time. That was an incredible session, gentlemen. Agreed. That was wonderful. Thank you all for writing so much. Yeah, everyone who submitted did a fantastic job. I enjoyed every single one of those stories. Agreed. The uh, the aforementioned Steam card raffle, we didn't forget about that. We'll be posting about that same day this episode goes live. Mm -hmm. Friday, October. No, not October. Uh, Friday, September. I'm waiting for the calendar to load. Uh, 24th. September 24th. That'll be when this episode goes live. That's when you're listening, maybe, probably. I don't know. And then on the same day, we'll announce the raffle winners on Twitter. Uh, that's about it. Thanks, everybody, for tuning into the show. Thanks again for the submissions to the jam. We love doing these, and we definitely want to do more in the future. If you're new to the channel, please like, comment, subscribe. Mm -hmm. Follow us for more fan fiction. If you're listening on the audio audio platforms, do check out our YouTube channel as well. We all, we have weekly uploads. Elias does manga theme videos. Steven and I do whatever else we feel like doing. We got a great <laughs> drawing show on there. A couple of animatic podcast segments. Those are a lot of fun. And we'll be doing Halloween theme videos this next month too. That's right. If you're watching this when I, it comes out, I was just about to say next episode on top of our full October of creepy spooky uh content it's gonna be our fifth 
Creepy Pasta episode. Ooh. Hooray! Creepy pastas are so fun. They're so crazy, wacky, wild. They are fun. So we have to actually like look for them. They're not just all easy to find. Yeah, true. Yeah, we don't we don't give ourselves the same general like stipulations of. Uh, Here's our theme of the week. Just check the tags for that. Creepy pastas. You actually have to like think of something you think would be interesting or just funny, and then see what creepy pastas exist in that front. But it's always a lot of fun. We hope you tune in and enjoy all the Halloween themed content coming to you. I think that's about it. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Stephen's gonna drop football and don't you forget it. I'm sorry, Anne.